Hello, I'm Kev Sheldrake and welcome to my talk, which is about the auto discovery of kernel struct offsets without using BPF type format. In October, we're going to release Sysmon for Linux, which is a port of the Windows sysinternals tool Sysmon, which is a system monitor tool that generates system and security events and sends them to the Windows event service. On Linux, the events will be generated with eBPF and they'll be sent to syslog instead. This is built on a library which we'll be releasing at the same time called libsysinternals eBPF, which is built on libbpf and includes a library of eBPF inline functions that can be used as helpers. It'll, of course, it will be fully open source. And the most important thing is that it will be built once and then it can be deployed to many machines. So before I get onto that, I just wanted to show some screenshots of Sysmon itself. Here you can see you can launch it in exactly the same way as you would on Windows. And when it's running, it generates events in the same XML format that is used on Windows. So if you can already obtain and parse the events from the Windows uh, version of Sysmon, then you can probably use the exact same parser uh, to interpret the events that you could pick up from syslog. So build once then deploy. The reason why this is important is because many users of a tool like Sysmon don't necessarily want to have build tools on their production servers. They don't want compilers, uh, tool chains, etc. They don't necessarily want kernel sources there either, um, or even symbols packages. And a lot of them certainly don't want to recompile the, the kernel just to run a tool. This means that it's very difficult for um, a tool to use BCC or BTF core in that kind of environment because a lot of kernels don't come with BTF already compiled in and a lot of machines don't have this, the uh, support infrastructure to make BTF work. So we need an alternative. So what do we actually want? Well, if we're only um, reporting on the parameters to syscalls, for example, then we don't really need a lot of introspection. We don't need a lot of reach into the kernel structures. But if we want to do interesting things like look up a file descriptor to see if it's a socket or a file, or pull out the entire command line from the task struct, and, um, or even navigate through a processor's parent uh, to get the, pro get the parent's process ID, then we need a bit more reach. Than, than we get otherwise. So inside libsys internals eBPF, we have um, a, a kernel offsets struct, which uh, contains up to four offsets per um, entry. And the way that they work, they work is we take typically the task struct, add the first offset, dereference the entry at that point, add, add the next offset, dereference the entry at that point, add the next offset, dereference entry at that point, for example. And that lets you navigate from struct to struct via pointers in those structs. Um, and of course, uh, if we get to an offset which is minus one, then we know to stop and that we've got the, um, the entry that we require. This is a really simple way of being able to pull out information from those structs based on knowing the geometry of them. So when libsys internals uh, eBPF starts up, um, the first thing it does is looks to see if there is a configuration file with these offsets in, because if there is, it will use that. These offset files can be generated using the get offsets module that comes with libsys in terms of eBPF, which is guaranteed to provide the absolute correct offsets. This is mainly a fallback mechanism in case the other uh, mechanisms don't work. So um, it's if the offset file is there, it uses that first because it's considered that you've decided that the other methods won't work and therefore you're forcing it to use a particular set of offsets. This does require a tool chain and kernel headers so in order to be able to run the get offsets module. If that um, configuration file isn't there then it will look it up the kernel version in the offsets database which currently has um, 1315 kernels uh, and the offsets for them, which were supplied kindly by Project Frita. Um, we simply take the uh, version of the kernel, look it up in the database, and if it's there, pull out the offsets. This is quite 
likely to work, um, but only on publicly distributed kernels. Because if you've compiled the kernel yourself, um, then obviously it won't be in our database. But if it's in our database, then it's highly likely to be accurate. So that's a quick and guaranteed method of finding the offsets. But if it's not in the database, for whatever reason, then we move on to automatic discovery of offsets, which is the main thing I was going to talk about. And the way I go about this is I use eBPF to perform memory forensics on kernel data structures. Essentially, I attach an eBPF program to a uh, syscall trace point, uh, and I use uname because it's not called very often. I set up some configuration in a, in a map um, where I give it the userland process ID. Um, then I call uname. That triggers the eBPF program, and the eBPF program will check the process ID is the one in the config to make sure that it's only talking to our userland program. If it is, it can then find the start of the task struct using a BPF helper, uh, dump memory from the task struct, um, stick it into the perf ring buffer and send it back to userland, where it can then be searched for known values from which we can get, then get the offsets. So what sort of things do we search for? Well, the process ID and the task group ID will be the same in our program because we haven't launched any separate tasks. And each of those is a 32-bit number. So uh, because they come one after the other in the task struct, we've now got a 64-bit number, essentially, which is unique. And the chances of finding that number otherwise is, is less than 1 in 2 to the 64. So if we find that number in the task struct, there's a good chance we found the offsets of the TGID and the PID. Equally, we can look from there to find the link to the parent task struct, which will be um, two 64-bit pointers with the same value um, somewhere after the TGID. Um, we can dereference the, the parent and pull out the process ID and compare it against what we get from get PPID in userland to confirm that we've actually found the right pointer. And another thing we can look for is the process start time, which obviously we know because we've just started the process up. And that'll be in nanoseconds since boot. And again, that is a unique 64-bit number, which we can search for somewhere after the parent link in the task struct. Uh, equally, we can look for the com quite easily, uh, because again, that would be quite unique. Um, we can look for creds, because uh, we find that the cred struct will be pointing to the same place as the real cred struct, and they are aligned one after the other in the task struct. Um, and if we fork off a child and we set the UID and the GID to particular values, then when we dump the cred struct for that child process, we can look for those values and confirm that we've actually found the right struct. So in summary, um, the way this works is if you have a configuration file, then sysinternal zbpf will use that first because that usually indicates that you either want a guaranteed method of getting the offsets or the other methods have failed and so you've run the get offsets module in order to obtain those. Otherwise, it looks up your kernel version in the database and if it's in there, pulls out the offsets that match that. And if it's not in the database, then it uses the automatic discovery process, uh, essentially memory forensics, which is what I've just been talking about. So, as I say, Sysmon for Linux and the Sysinternal ZBPF library will be released in early October. They will be open source on GitHub. And if you want to talk to me, ask me questions, or provide us any kind of feedback, then you can reach out to me on Twitter at KevSecurity. And you can also email me on my Microsoft email address, which is kevin.sheldrake at microsoft.com. Thank you very much.